when I use Visual Studio Code to share programming on my YouTube channel. The question I get the most is, what is the name of the Viscode theme you're using? You know what? I couldn't answer right away because it doesn't come from any theme. I use CSS to create a custom Viscode theme and you can do the same. In this video, I will guide everyone to create a custom Viscode theme using your own CSS skills. You can change the color of any text. Change background color, add borders to links, add your avatar here, change the active tab effect, and create a color motion animation effect for it. Before starting, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video if you find it useful. Thank you everyone, and now let's get started. First, we will prepare the necessary things for this video. On drive D, in the demo folder, I filled in an avatar and create a custom CSS file. We will write the changes to the VSCode theme into this file. In essence, redesigning a theme from scratch is extremely time consuming. So I will save time by installing a theme first. After that, if I'm not satisfied with the areas in this theme design, I use CSS to customize them. Access the extension area. The theme I choose will be Dracula official. After installation is complete, click set color, choose an option you like. So we have a default theme design for Dracula. Next is embedding our custom CSS file into VSCode to customize this template design. To do that, we have to install an extension called custom CSS and JS loader. After the installation is complete, go to settings. Click the file icon on the right side of the screen. A JSON setup file will appear. In the last line add, Viscode custom CSS import, with the main value being the path to the CSS file we created earlier. After finishing, move your mouse to this path, then press control click. If it says this file does not exist, that means the path you just entered is incorrect. Let's check carefully once more. I wrote an extra S at the end of the file name. I will correct it, then press Control click again. And here is that file. So the preparation stage is really complete. Now we will proceed to customize this design again. Now click on View. Click Command. Here look for Developer Toggle Developer Tools. A programming window appears. Does it sound familiar to you? It's like the Developer Tool window when we design web pages. In essence, each element in VSCode is created from a class. If you edit the CSS code of a certain class, the elements with that class will also change. For example, now I want to know what class the HTML head text has, so first I click on this arrow, then move the mouse to the location of the element I want to check. It displayed relevant information. Class name is MTK10. Has width and height parameters, code color, font size, font families. When I click on it, the developer tool window will display the CSS lines of this class. When hovering over this class position, all elements in Visco that are using this class will be highlighted. So if I change the color of this class to blue, all the related elements change color as well. So now I will try to edit it to my liking as follows. Use background image linear gradient to create a background gradient effect. WebKit takes the color to make the text color transparent. Convert the background gradient color effect to text color. Finally, increase the font thickness to 700. So we just use CSS knowledge to customize a small part of the original theme. However, when we turn off this application and then reopen it, everything will return to the way it was before. To avoid that from happening, we will first copy the newly edited CSS code into the custom CSS file earlier and save it. At the end of the video, we will reload the design so that VSCode will use this custom file to update the interface later. For now, let's continue to edit everything we like first. Continuing like that, I perform the old operations again. First click on the arrow mark, then click on the element you want to check. So this blue element is created from two classes, MTK fine and MTK one. Most of the time it is only used to regulate text italics, so we won't need to touch it. 
So with MTK Fine, I will proceed to edit it as follows. First use the background image linear gradient to create the gradient background effect. Next make the text color transparent. Change the background color to the text color. And finally make the text bold with font weight 700. Similar to the new class, after editing this class, we will need to copy it into the custom CSS file. Next are these paths. By default, the paths are designed with a yellow bottom border, which is boring. So I'm going to edit it a little bit. The yellow color of the text is created from the MTK8 class. However, the bottom border effect is from the text decoration property above. So I'll fix it here. Delete the default border. Instead, I created a new bottom border that is four pixel dashed and also yellow. I continued to copy this code into the custom CSS file. Other content sections will be similar. If you want to adjust anything, just click on it and edit. And now I'll go edit more special things. That's this default avatar image. When you click on it, the class that created it appears on the right side of the screen. The value inside this content is essentially a symbol to embed the SVG image of the user image. When we delete the content inside, the image completely disappears. Notice that when we want to edit something with existing properties, we only change its value, not remove it. I keep giving it a red background color with 40 pixels. Height 40 pixels. 50% border radius to create a circle. With the background image, its value is the path to the place where you previously saved the avatar image. Finally set the image size to 100%. That's it. We continue to copy this code into the custom CSS file. Here we know that not only can we edit the code inside, but we can also edit any element within the scope of VSCode. Can be fixed. The last element I want to edit in this video is the active tab effect. So I continue to click on it to find the class where it was created. This seems to be it. However, notice when I hover over this class, all three tabs on the screen are highlighted, which proves that this class is common to all tabs. So if there are no other classes on the screen, move the mouse to the HTML area, click on the triangle effect, the child elements inside it will appear. So inside this tab, it includes two small tabs. One tab contains the file name content and one tab creates the top border effect. And I need to edit this border effect, so I'll click on it. At this point, its CSS section will appear. First, I increase the height by five pixels to make it bigger. Use a linear gradient background to create a gradient effect. Of course, I also want to create an animation effect. But the keyframe cannot be written here, but must be in the custom CSS file. After completing this hard code, I copied it into the custom CSS file. Remember to save this file. Now everyone see, if I turn off this code and then turn it back on. Everything returns as it was, without any changes. Don't worry, as long as you have saved the custom CSS file. Now, just open the command. Find the keyword enable CSS and JS loader, click on it. Select refresh. So the data we edited earlier has now appeared. From the next time we access VSCode, this CSS data has been updated. We will not need to do these operations again. Now I wanna create a background animation effect for the active tab. First, I enlarge the background size to 200%, then run an animation called Border Top Active. Each round runs for 4 seconds, and there is no limit to the number of repetitions. Specifically, when this animation works, the background position from 0% left will move 200% right. It doesn't change at all. Remember that it only changes immediately when we work with developer tools. When editing directly in VSCode, we have to click on View and click Command. Click Enable CSS and JS Loader. Click Reload. 
And it worked. The border top effect on our active tab had a very beautiful moving animation. And that is the entire content of this video by Lundev. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel to follow many interesting videos to come. If you have any questions or ideas you want to suggest, please leave a comment so we can learn together. Thank you very much everyone and see you in the next video.